All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Chaika. I'm here with Tyler Adams and John Robleski and we're Full Sun Design. And today we're here to present to you about our locker room redesign. The objective of this course was to pick a problem that we found in our lives and then in a group, pick a solution that we were gonna make throughout the entire year. We did this first by researching the product or the problem. Then we designed a prototype, we tested our prototype, and now we're in the stage of evaluating our solution. Here's our problem statement. 57% of male locker room users at St. Thomas More report that the current locker room facility is not clean. A 2011 study recorded in the Journal of Environmental Health found that on average, 86.9% of the MRSA bacteria found in high school athletic facilities is located in locker rooms, and updated facilities are needed to combat disease. Here we have a second problem statement. Basically, at St. Thomas More High School, the boys' locker room is outdated. It has much wasted space, is not a selling point for incoming students, has, and has a maze-like floor plan. The goal of this project is to create space for male students and athletes alike to take pride in. A new locker room design would reinstall school pride and create a space to promote teen unity. Um, through our survey that we sent out to um, the users of the locker room, we can come to the conclusion that there's many people that think the locker room are unclean. A lot of people think disagree with it being up to date. And then a lot of people believe that there's a lot of wasted space. Here are some student opinions from the survey. Um, some On the lockers, some students believe that many are broken and that they're not very usable and they're dangerous to use. And then students also believe that there should be more pride and spirit in our locker room and that we should have things like couches and it should look good and we should have things that we can use like uh, TV or stuff to pass time. And then here are pictures of our old locker room. This is sort of where you can see what the maze like with all the hallways. Here's one of the old team rooms and the old general locker room. And then here are the current showers. Our requirements for design that we have are that there need to be two lo team locker rooms, one general locker room, this needs to be cost efficient. In the team locker rooms, there needs to be sit-in lockers that can hold all of the gear for sports. It needs to be an open concept design. The lockers need to be durable and last. The locker room needs to be easy to clean. The showers need much more privacy. The smell needs to be able to get got rid of. And then we need to be able to also keep it smelling good. We need to optimize the storage. Some sort of logo we were thinking of that could bring up team spirit. We need to improve the overall aesthetic, and then all of the lighting needs to be changed. So what we did, we, we spent a lot of time drawing and designing different floor plans. Uh, we actually came up with around 60 different designs. Um, we evaluated each design, and this was kind of the first um, idea that we had. Um, looking at the general locker room, it's more open, and we wanted to kind of try to get away from the maze-like uh, floor plan. Uh, looking right above that in the showers, there are different shower shawls, stalls. Um, in the different team locker rooms, it's much more open in a U-shape to promote team unity. So what we did was we sent that floor plan to a, a local architect in Milwaukee, and he gave us a bunch of different notes. A lot of his notes were on privacy and how you know uh, people from the outside could actually potentially see in, which would be um, dangerous to the people inside and the people outside as well. And um, he also pointed out areas of wasted space. So we took all of his notes and we created this final floor plan. In this floor plan, we, we created a more of a lounge area for students uh, to feel more open. Uh, we spread the lockers out more, making sure that there were enough lockers in each area. We added bigger lockers to the team locker rooms, and we added locker pods in the first team locker room to uh, maximize space, as well as um, maximize the amount of uh, football players that um, can be in there at once. Uh, we added a couple more showers, um, making the shower stall longer. And with the um, entrances and exits, we made sure that there's no line of sight uh, from the outside in and vice versa. So overall, this is the this is the locker room. Um, we wanted to kind of make it a light blue. We wanted to make it light blue. We wanted to make it student friendly. 
we just wanted a space where students could feel safe at, as well as get ready for their big game. So now I'll take you into kind of each different section. Uh, so the first section is the general locker room. And as you can see, there's a, the little lounge more in depth. Um, there's a lot of double lockers for to maximize um, student use um, and space. And there are tables to maybe do homework before a game. Um, and there's also um, a slogan, a school slogan on the wall to again, promote um, uh, team spirit. Again, here's another picture of the general locker room. Um, the first picture is looking in, right into the locker room. Um, as you can see, the lockers fill along the walls and in the middle of the hallway, um, still creating enough space for students to get through and creating a, um, an, a less maze-like feel. Next, we have the, the first team locker room, which it may look compact in the picture, but as you can see on the floor plan, um, there are many different lockers. I believe there are around 50 to 60 um, different lockers um, for football players to store pads and helmets, uh, baseball players to store bags and bats and any other sport that would need. This is the second team locker room. Um, a feature of this team locker room has um, uh, a projector and a screen to show different plays. Um, it's similar to the uh, first team locker room. This one is just a little smaller. It still has the same big locker room, lockers uh, for soccer and other sports as well. And here we have the showers. Um, I mentioned the showers a little earlier. Um, there are about 10 showers in the, uh, sh the shower room with stalls to protect uh, for, for maximum privacy uh, for athletes to want to shower before and after games. Uh, here we have the storage room. Um, the picture on the right, that is, is the um, all athlete storage. So that's where basketball would store their stuff, baseball as well. And the storage, uh, the storage picture on the left is um, for uh, football storage, um, for specifically for football pads, helmets, etc. Here we have the updated coaches room. Um, because we took a lot of space from the general locker room, we wanted to make sure that the coaches still had a safe environment um, to change and to get ready for games. So we included tables and chairs, lockers, and it is attached to a bathroom with a shower. So besides the digital model that we constructed, we also decided to build a physical model and we needed to build a prototype. And so this is the first prototype that we created. So we took white foam board and made it all to scale so that we could perform various tests on this model. Uh, the picture in the middle here is the model at its completion. We made it in three separate parts. So for testing, we had to perform a variety of tests to make sure that our design met all the requirements set out by the design requirements that we set with the athletic director at the beginning of the year. So some of the tests we did were the team room test, the general locker room test. These were basically checklist type tests to make sure that we were hitting certain uh, number of lockers needed for the football team and to make sure that we had two separate team rooms, which we do not have in the current design. Another test that we did that we'll get to later is the material cost test. When we first set out on this project and talked with the athletic director and the administration, cost was a big issue to keep it, the budget down was a high priority. Another one that we decided to do was a privacy and line of sight test. After we talked with the architect, some of the red flags that he noted were privacy concerns. So we, as you can see with these pictures, we took and made sure that on the physical model, there would be no changing areas visible if you were to look from an outside door. Some other testing we did was with the showers. That was another checklist type of t test to make sure that we had at least 10 showers and they all had stalls to increase privacy, which was a direct request of the athletic director. And another one was aesthetics. We made sure that each room had either a logo, some sort of motivational saying, or the use of school colors integrated into the, 
to the design to make it more aesthetically pleasing and get a recruiting factor out of it. And then finally, we did a loads test. So our design did require us to knock down walls and reconstruct walls in order to make the room feel less maze-like and more open. And to do this, we had to download some new software and use Autodesk Revit and structural robot structural load analysis tools to test and see if the minimum load requirements for a gymnasium were met with the design. On the left, this was our control. We didn't add any of the walls in. And after we applied the force, as you can see, it did, it, the structure failed. And there was a large uh, divot, which would have been the roof. And on the right was uh, the our current design with all the walls, uh, how we wanted them. And there was no structural failure. So that passed that test. So the budget. This was the budget that we had. Originally, it was a lot lower, and then we kept. We had to add labor costs and demolition costs. At first, we sh our focus of the project was to make something very realistic, and then we realized that we should go for an ideal design. So this was the final budget. It came out to be one hundred and forty-one thousand dollars. Now that is a very rough estimate, as we just used. Uh, we used all brand new products and we just grabbed, we didn't spend too much time finding the cheapest. So this is a rough estimate of what our project would cost. So thank you for taking the time to listen to our presentation. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, we're going to link a survey in this email. And we actually need, we would ask that you take that because we are still continuing this class and we need to evaluate our presentation based on some feedback that uh, you give. We'll also be linking a virtual walkthrough of the design if you'd like to look at it more. And thank you for your time and we hope that you can take the survey and hope you enjoyed.